Well, thank you for joining me again today on our Side by Side. It is really good to know that we are all learning from the Scriptures as we walk together, and Jesus truly is there with us by His Spirit, I believe. I'm going to read from Luke 24, 44. Then He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I'm sure you've had those times in your life when you say, I finally get it. You know, certain subjects like maths or English, the grammar rules or equations or languages and, you know, all the declensions and all the different things. And we know that all subjects have rules and patterns that guide us and make sense, but only after they've been explained maybe many times over. And it seems that there's a point where it may all is like confusing. People used to say this to me about Hebrew and Greek, and they would say, you know, you'll get to a point when nothing will make sense, and then suddenly it will all become clear. <laughs> it's like an epiphany in your education. Um, and, you know, there's a sense in which that was true. As you worked your way through it, there was a point where you felt you knew nothing, and then it starts to make sense. And, you know, I'm sure some of this has to do with the left and right brain, you know, different areas of our brain where we have more inclination to ability in one area or another area. But then when it comes to the most important matters affecting every human being, that is their relationship with the Lord who made them, it's very different. To begin with, we are all made in his image, and that means we have the capacity to know him and to relate to him, to have a relationship with him. It's not a question of our intellect. Indeed, sometimes intellect could get in the way of it because we sometimes want to think we need to know far more than we is necessary for a, for a step of faith. And if we keep on demanding yet another question be answered and solved, it may well be that we never get to that place. No, because believing is seeing, as the statement is, and there's a sense in which that's very true. The Bible describes the world of each of us without God as being in darkness, a kingdom of darkness that we need to be rescued from. And God works by his Holy Spirit to open the minds of our eyes, as the scripture says, to reveal to us. And that's what's going on here. And it's a lovely way in which it says here that he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I remember when I was about 19 and I had just begun to reinvestigate the Christian faith again. Well, it's a very general way of saying that God was violently engaging in my mind and heart. But in that process, I once lifted up a Bible. I didn't have a Bible for many years. And I lifted up a Bible, and apart from the fact that print was small, and I think it was the authorized version, which would not necessarily rule out my ability to understand it from a linguistic point of view or anything like that. But when I read it, it just made no sense to me. It made no sense whatsoever. I just could not get the most basic things. It's as if somebody had pushed the delete button and my whole page had been wiped clean. And, and that was quite a shock to the system, if you think about it, because I'd had years as a child under good teaching, instruction, and Christian endeavor, and uh, Sunday school, and all sorts of things, until I was 10 years of age. But all of that seemed to have just disappeared. And, you know, when it finally comes back to you, what an amazing thing. Though I would have to say that it doesn't come back in a day and it doesn't come back in a year. You may have to keep wrestling with things. That's now a long, long time, and I've been studying the Bible every day of my life since I was about 20 years of age, I suppose you could say. And I'm learning so many things. And there are times I have to say, I think I finally get it, even now. And so when I come to passages like this one, the one thing I've learned is I need to slow down my reading of it. I need to weigh the words. But what is so helpful here is that what it's teaching us is that Jesus says, he says, it's, it's not just about the fact I'm standing before you alive. Because can you imagine if Jesus appeared before you resurrected and you had no other background, what would that mean to you? If you knew Jesus as a living person, as a crucified person, and now as a resurrected person, what, what sense would you make of that? 
you need a framework into which you can put that. That's why he says, thus he says, it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. His resurrection and his death do not mean anything to a person who doesn't understand why. What's it all about? And so when Jesus talks about going back into all the scriptures to understand the scriptures, he says, unless you understand the scriptures, you'll not really understand the point and the purpose of my life, my death, my resurrection, my ascension. And that is what he does for them. So what I thought I would do just for the second half of this morning was to take you and I on a very brief way, little trip back into the first book of the Bible, which is part of the law that he was talking to them about, and show how even there we begin to see Jesus shining through. Now, I have a thing that I would do sometimes in my Bible. I'd write a little cross beside a part of the Bible when I see Jesus. In any part of the Old Testament, I stick a little cross, and then they start to emerge, and a story of Jesus emerges throughout the whole of the Bible. And if in case you're worried about writing on your Bible, I have no qualms about writing all over my Bible, for that's my personal engagement with it. And um, I'm not defacing it in any way, don't worry. It's a respectfully, respectful way to do it. But let's go back to Genesis 1 and 3. What do we read there? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So is Jesus there? Well, who is the one who said in John 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world? And as we begin to look even at the theme of light, which we could do, but I'm not sure that that's what I want to go today, but take the theme of light throughout the whole of the Old Testament, and we discover the place of light as pointing, not just revealing, but pointing to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Take, for example, uh, another verse, chapter 2, verse 9, and there you come to this, where the, you have this, the the to have out of the ground the Lord made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight for good food, good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then verse, uh, and this, this of course is what we have lost. After the fall, the tree of life is barred to man, but God promises fruitfulness to those who can know him. That's Psalm 1 verse 3. Eternal life is then obtained in Christ free access to the tree of life then reappears in Revelation 22 and 2. So the tree is another one of those themes. You could see the tree throughout the whole Bible nearly. It's a theme. And Jesus, of course, dies upon a tree as well. And then think about, uh, for example, 315. That's maybe one of the most obvious ones. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The offspring of the woman who inflicts decisive defeat on the serpent's head is Christ. But in earlier times within the Old Testament, there are partial defeats through people who prefigure Jesus, who comes and who will ultimately defeat him. This verse 15 is called the first gospel, the Proto-Euangelion, the very first time the gospel is mentioned in this way. But it's only one of those places where we see Jesus. And then again, uh, the tree is, the, the way is barred. There's a flaming sword in verse 24 of chapter 3 that bars the way to the tree of life. And when Jesus opens the way to it, he says, I am the way. He opens up the way. I mean, my time is just ticking away. There are four verses, but we've only got to the third chapter of Genesis. We haven't spoken about, about Abraham and Isaac and Isaac becoming the one who was like the sacrifice and God provided for him through the lamb pointing to Jesus. We haven't got to Joseph and how he prefigures Jesus in so many ways, the one who rescues his people. There's so many things there. But you begin to understand that as we read the Bible with our eyes open and our hearts open, more and more and more we see Jesus. And so when Jesus says he explained, he opened their eyes or their minds to understand everything that was written about him in the Scriptures, then they say, now I understand. So when I went along every week to the synagogue and I heard the scroll taken, I saw it taken down and it being read, that was all, all about you. That was all about you. 
And so this really just encourages you and I in our Bible reading and thinking that the whole Bible is about Jesus and he invites us to step into it. In fact, he has actually stepped into us and he brings that truth into us by his spirit at the same time. So there's a thought for you and I to ponder today as we go about our lives and to encourage us. And maybe what I'll do, I'll continue this theme maybe tomorrow just to reinforce it in a, in a particular way. So God bless.